Good morning slash afternoon, everyone. I don't even know what time it is where I am. Two o'clock. Okay, so it's it's morning for you people on the West Coast. This is Jeremiah. I'm here at Universal Orlando City Walk. The guy in the chair is the little herd from Lee. Hello, Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, Jeremiah. So today's walk and talk was to focus on the Universal stores that just reopened or just opened and just changed titles. Um, my original plan was, hey, I'll start in one of the parts, hopefully by a Velocicoaster, get some testing, and then uh, come out. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> it, it is still spring break here in the general Orlando area, and Islands of Adventure reached capacity this morning at a little after 10, and I want to say Universal was a little after 11.30. Um, so the parks are busy. City Walk is busy. The parking was very busy. It took me 20 minutes to get in through the parking, so. Hey, people want to go to their theme parks. Uh, I think a lot of it was also the people pulling up to the parking toll booths, the toll booths going, Sorry, the park's at capacity, and then having to explain to them how to turn around or do something, because, you know, it, it works great with all those locals that have gotten the messages of, hey, check the app, hey, check the app, hey, check the app, to the tourists that are here that have not ventured into the parks. Yeah, they don't know to check the app, so... Yeah. Now that we've been doing this for a while, though, what do you what do you prefer? Do you prefer the way that Disney does it, where you get a reservation, or do you prefer it this way? Oh, I prefer Disney from day one. I, well, from day one when it was. Hang on, let's let's step back. I'll ask this question, and we'll go. Uh, from day one, where is reservations versus you know free for all? The free for all here wasn't bad, and it wasn't bad up until Christmas time when it hit the point of. I pulled up one day to do a walk and talk and they said, nope, you can't go into the parks. And that was when I realized, okay, things are getting back to normal, but the capacity is low, so they have to let only a limited amount in and the limited amount gets here at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's always a bummer, but we will make the most of it. Walk around City Walk, see what's new at the stores yep, and uh, I go to the Legacy store. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish the Legacy Store because I'm most excited about that. I haven't been into the new Universal Studio Store. So, one, you'll have to tell me how, if we start to break up. And two, why do they have Legacy stuff in the Studio Store? I'm confused. <laughs> so, this shop took over, what, three, four different shops that were Yeah. Here? It looks yeah. really nice inside, though. It looks very nice, and as somebody who's used to Universal Studios Hollywood and their studio store that, again, took over two shops out there, walking into this one, you know, it, it definitely has a different feel. Um, I love the blueprints that are up there. So that's for the Hulk coaster. I can't even tell what that's actually for. Yeah, can you get in closer to it? It it has a clock, so I'm not even sure what that could be. And this one over here, it's a newsstand. Well, if anyone watching knows and wants to put it in the comments. Yeah. But Please. I have no idea what that is either. I mean, it, I would guess it's part of the old entrance area. Um, because it definitely looks classic. Like it, looking at that, I can picture that in Universal Hollywood in their entrance area. But here, you know, it, it could be somewhere in the New York area, but I'm not. It doesn't ring a bell for me. It may have been, you know, an old design that they've repurposed and changed around. Huh. Um, you know, I'm starting to think that they, they have something coming pretty soon that may have dinosaurs attached to it. It looks that way, doesn't it? Maybe like June 10th or something. June 10th? What? Right. No, that's really cool. It's a nice little theming 
Yeah, I lo oh here, yeah, this is definitely Hollywood Boulevard. There's the dark room, Schwab's, yeah, the AP lounge. And look, more Jurassic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stuff for Velocity Coaster coming June tenth. Can't wait. Uh, I I'm mostly excited for annual pass previews and uh, anything that I don't have to. So you weren't with us when Hagrid's open. No. But I I didn't come for opening day. I came shortly thereafter. But Mac uh, decided to be here for opening day. And live tweeted the entire 10 hours he was in the queue. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Okay, that that's a funny, that's funny. Hey, Nathan, what's up? Got Nathan here, got Tammy. Oh, Tammy's from Australia, if you didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Got the whole crew here. Yeah, so the stuff that they have here, they have a wide variety. I'm, I'm impressed with some of this stuff. Um, and again, June 10th. Yeah, lots of Velocicoaster stuff. Lots of stuff from all the different themed areas and rides. Um, I just saw this mask on somebody earlier, and I thought it was quite funny. Yeah, and I think that's a new one. Uh, this one, uh, mostly Jurassic World, Velocicoaster, um, the houses of Harry Potter, the candies. <laughs> I'm you know, actually surprised they got a Popeye's mask out there, but I guess you I still know. have the attractions, so might as well. But, yeah. The thing that's killing me right now... Oh, look, here's the Disney section. Um, <laughs> some of these masks I look at... And I, when I was out in California not too recently, um, there were some fun ones at Disneyland, at the City Walk, and I was like... Or Downtown Disney. I'm like, oh, I really love that. And then I realized, wait, I got my first vaccine shot a few weeks ago. My second one's on Friday. Um the world is slowly moving to the, hey, you don't have to wear a mask full time, like if you're taking photos at the Disney, Walt Disney World Resort, starting tomorrow. Um, or the 8th. Is today the 6th or the 7th? Uh, today's the 7th, so it is uh, technically starting tomorrow, but... Follow the rules that they set yeah. forth, and they will have the announcements. Got uh, some candy? Yeah, and... You know, over here we look. the The blueprints are the uh, Universal Studios entrance building, so that's got the newer look to it. The administration building. Uh, the funny thing is, most of these are modeled after stuff from California. So I've seen the actual buildings, and then I see the Universal version, the New York Public Library, uh, more Disney. <laughs> The Universal Studio shirt was pretty cool. Yeah, they have some great stuff. Um, they they definitely put out some of the nice Universal stuff, but sadly, it is you know I, since I'm a Hollywood person, I love the Hollywood stuff. But sadly, both Hollywood and Florida put out the exact same stuff and just changed the the word underneath. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice little Harry area. Potter section. Um, yeah, you may want to rephrase your little all Harry Potter all the time. <laughs> yeah, you can purchase wands, and they have the Marauders map. I can't tell. Yeah, I think the blueprints are diagonally. I just noticed that the music playing in the background is the music that would definitely shut us down if need be. So let's <laughs> just keep talking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hogsmeade Village. That's going to be an issue walking around City Walk, but we'll try to yeah. do our best. Yeah, it's all the wands you could ever want. That's cool. I like oh, the so. wallpaper they use there, too. Yeah, it's actually textured, which is nice. And then you look up, and they have... Yeah. 
that four different houses and the stars above. Very cool. Yeah, this is really well done. I mean, again, it's it's universal going, okay, here are hot commodities. Let's let's focus on those. So they've got Simpsons, Harry Potter, and Velocicoaster. At least one of them they don't have to give Disney money for. Oh, two, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how that works with uh, Disney buying out all those franchises. <laughs> oh, and they got a Christmas tree there? Yeah, they have their Christmas section, one of the uh, throw rugs, and again, lots yeah. of the Diagon Alley. Here's Hagrid's hut. Oh, this is really nice. And I yeah. know that we have a big photo uh, rundown from a few days ago when uh, one of our CEOs was here and went through all that. So if you want to look closer, take a look at our article not too long ago. Yeah, you can just search for Universal Store and it should pop up. And um, it's a lot of merchandise that you could find at the parks, but it's nice to have it right out there at City Walk in case you forget something or you don't want to go into the park. Like, it's at capacity. Yeah. <laughs> Got Voodoo Donut over there to the right. So are you a Voodoo Donut or Everglazed? Or have you, you've had both, right? I haven't had Voodoo Donut yet. Oh. So I've only had Everglazed. Um, and I thought Everglazed was okay. Still think it's really highly priced. Um, yeah, wait till you try it. It's Voodoo Donut. <laughs> I like Voodoo Donut. I I just had, um, they have one of the donuts called the Memphis Mafia, which is a, kind of an Elvis-themed donut. It's a banana fritter with uh, peanut butter and um, uh, or something, peanut butter and chocolate on the top of it, drizzled and peanut butter chips and yeah, it, you know, the story of Elvis and his passing, eating those type of sandwiches. That donut did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> While we were walking over to uh, Universal Studios Florida, Jay had a question about getting into Disneyland in terms of capacity. Oh, I, you know, I sadly, because I'm on the East Coast, Sadly, thankfully, uh, don't have to worry about that. Um, but, oh yeah, they still have the sign out here for capacity. Wow. Um, I would say, I know that they put up a, a roundabout time in one of the messages of when the reservations can be open. So I would say have three or four computers going at once. You know, I, one of the biggest challenges I saw of that is the... You know, if you have a ticket, you rebook. If you don't have a ticket, you book the day and then you buy the ticket or buy the ticket, then book the day. So yeah. those steps will get a little challenging. There's a lot of questions still about Disneyland's reopening on if all the tickets are park hoppers, if they're going to be single tickets too. But we'll see what happens when the day comes, Jay. Did we... Um, I, I, I know that we went over 1,200 different things in that day, but did we catch in the information that you can park hop after one? Yeah, so you could park hop okay. after one. So I'm wondering then if all the tickets are going to be park hoppers or if they're going to sell single park tickets as well. Because um, with that being the case, if Disney California Adventure is open, you could just get that and then you could always park hop to Disneyland's, but... All those strategies, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, that. I mean, I think back to when um, Magic Kingdom and what was it Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom, then Epcot, and then Disney's Hollywood Studios. I can't remember which. It was two one day, then two the next. And I know just about everybody on the team was trying to get the reservations for those first few days. Um, one of the benefits was that as opposed to California, where if you stayed at a hotel here, you were guaranteed entry. I know that that's statements that have been made of, if you're staying at one of the hotels, you are not guaranteed entry. Well, I guess if you're staying at Disney's 
Grand Californian Hotel and Spa, you're not guaranteed entry. Correct. <laughs> That's the only one that'll be open at the time. So are they not doing outdoor queue lines, like standby lines anymore to get into the park? Nope. All that they had down there was um, re-entry and hotel guests. Huh. Yeah, like they didn't. So I, the one time that I came, when it was at capacity, like I was mentioning earlier, um, and thank goodness it was like this. It, I walked up, I pulled in at capacity, walked up to Universal, and they had just dropped the capacity, so I was able to walk right in, which would have been a really awkward walk and talk. <laughs> but it looks like today they are holding true to capacity. And you know, judging by the guests out here at City Walk, it is it is busy. Yeah. Yeah, just looking at it from my end, it looks pretty busy. Now there are phone number there's a phone number you could call that they'll tell you if the parks are at capacity or not. Mm -hmm. And then also their Twitter account will also inform you. So if any of you guys are watching um, that's a good way to know instead of just going right up to the entrance. I I prefer the app because the the app is pretty on top of it. I was watching, you know, as I was coming in, going, okay, can I get into Universal proper? And it, I watched it pretty much go from hours to at capacity. So if you go on the app and just go to the park hours, it'll say at capacity or not. So we're going to walk up a very little traveled path, at least on my behalf. <laughs> um, you know, this was inspired by Lombard Street in San Francisco with the, the back and forth, which I also think is convenient for the guests with the uh, ECVs, wheelchairs and disabilities that need the ramps. Makes it very, very convenient. It is a cool looking area though. I do like this little section. Yeah, it's just, you know, the weirdest, a tattoo place. Um, yeah. The bread box. But it you is know, nice I, if you don't want theme park food, you got other options up here. Yeah. The frozen yogurt place is always, seems available. Um, oh, good. Come on, Eileen's going to shut us down. Uh, tattoo <laughs> plays, the Burger King, the Panda Express, Moe's. I, this has always been one of my favorite run-to places when I'm here and I'm hungry. I'll just pop up here and get something out of the, the fast food area. Yeah, it's one of the go-to spots. The BK Bar is still open as well. Let's pop our head in and see. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks open. <laughs> yeah, but everybody's in line for Panda right now. Yeah. Which, Can't blame them. They know quality. <laughs> that's always one of my favorites of this location. You know, just with every other place in a theme park. Just look around, ask questions, figure out what you're actually in line for, because some people will wait. Well, uh, for reference... Um, I was here with some family not too long ago, and we were we got in line in China at Epcot. And about halfway through, one of the people that we were with goes, "Oh wait, we're in line for Frozen. We're not in line for uh, the movie." So just it's really difficult now because of those physically distant lines. You really have no idea what you're going to be waiting for if you yeah. just jump into one. Yeah, and I've seen it in the parks where, you know, busy days, restrooms are full, and there's a line for the restroom. I, I always used to joke in uh, California when we would be in lines for, like, Indiana Jones that had a really long line, and people were like, what are you in line for? I would make up things, you know. We're in line to see Michael Jackson, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so here's always a beautiful view that I think is definitely under utilized yeah and there's always tables up there too so if anyone wants to come eat over there always nice yeah i i was definitely because i when i arrived early at first i was like hey i'll go to the park and you know maybe take some pictures get on some rides 
or I'll just sit in the shade somewhere. And I found a nice shady spot next to one of the restaurants. Um, I actually don't know the status of all the bars and uh, restaurants up here. Yeah, for the most part, they were open, but um, with the current situation, they're obviously closed right now. You still have, like, the Bob Marley restaurant that we're going to be coming up to on the left. Yeah, which I forget about every single time. I'm yeah, like, it's a shame. It's a really nice area just up there on that quote-unquote second floor. Um, there's a lot of real estate that, you know, maybe they'll change up. Yeah, like, I, I'm pretty sure I've never noticed the statue of Bob Marley. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I also love that they have the, you know, the window with the AC unit hanging out. And it's very really well done. True to Jamaica and that area of the world. Yeah, I, I think I've been to Rising. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, wait, I thought somebody was chasing me. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. We're, the sound effects often hit. Um, Rising Stars, I think I've been to once, but I know a lot of people who work there, and it's always a great place to go. Yeah, Rising Star, if people haven't been there, it has an actual um, band that plays along with you when you're singing karaoke, which makes it incredibly cool. Yeah, and it's pretty up, neat inside as well. Up here, it's just such a... You know, it was a great design, putting the clubs and everything up on the second level, kind of separate people. And, you know, this was built back when Pleasure Island was a thing. So as yeah. opposed to having to walk through the clubs and the people that may have been drinking a little too much up here, it's, you have to make an effort to get up here. Yeah, it was a great idea because it really did separate it. Anahitos is... As somebody from California who loves Mex Mexican food, Anahitos is probably the closest to real Mexican food that I've had out here. But it was funny, I went to the Anahitos that they just opened at City Walk in California, and it was very much copying this Anahitos, which isn't true Mexican. It's kind of a Tex Mex mix. Um, but it was still, it was very, very interesting that I was eating food that I had in Florida at a Mexican restaurant in California. <laughs> and they're also getting the Toothsome factory out there. Oh, yeah. The, the Toothsome factory, like, that takes over the old Hard Rock right in the center of City Walk. So it'll look amazing when it's done. But at this point, when Hard Rock was built out there it was kind of built as the end of city walk and then they built stuff around it. So it wasn't, it wasn't always a 360 building, but as you walk around, you start seeing where things kind of weirdly got added to it. So whatever the finale final product is, it'll be interesting to see. Um, yeah. Yep. Both the signs as I approach islands of venture say at capacity. So, yep, it looks like we'll be right around the half hour mark or so for this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got Margaritaville still going strong. Oh, yeah. Parrot heads will never die. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can honestly say that. I, I know quite a few parrot heads, both old and young. And I, you know, I have no problem with Jimmy Buffett, but, they, you know, much like deadheads, they there is a diehard group of fans, of specific fans that just blow my mind. Have you ever been to Big Fire that's on your right? Uh, yes, I actually, this was one of the first, when it opened, I, I was lucky enough to be here on the first day. And it was really good. I was impressed. Um, the menu wasn't too expensive. I kind of head over here and let's see if we can get something that has some glare. Yeah, like the pork chop. No, nope, you're not getting any of that. Uh, Twenty-six dollars for a pork chop. Uh, skillet roasted half chicken, twenty-four dollars. Seafood baked for twenty-six dollars. And they're 
large portions. They're not just the, okay, here's your burger. Um, it's a nice place. You should definitely come out and maybe take a special person in your life out to dinner there. Yeah, maybe I will. I've never been to the cowfish. Like that's that's one of those ones that everybody's like, how have you never been to cowfish? I, <laughs> I have been to cowfish. Um, it is good. I'm not a sushi person, and I know they have more than sushi, but at the same time, when I'm here, I just it's not a must-do for me. Okay, so here we are at the Universal Legacy Store, which I appreciate that they just removed the studio sign there and just put in a giant Legacy. Uh, <laughs> even different font, <laughs> the way it looks. So these griffins used to be on the entrance of... Universal Studios. I'm pretty sure that this hasn't been like this long. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I haven't been in here. Oh, yeah. I'm excited, too. Confrontation. Okay. Five of Playland. <laughs> I, I, mean, I think I can probably skip focusing on most of the retro merchandise because it's all the same retro merchandise that we've already yeah, seen. Yeah, that's all stuff we've seen before, so. Have you always lived out here, Lee? Um, I mean, I have for, let's see, 11 years now. So, a so little you, bit. You weren't here, like, opening time of... Um, Universal. Oh, no. The Doom bot from Dr. Doom's Fear Fall. <laughs> Some ET merch. I do appreciate the sign. Yeah, I was going to say that, too. I like how they added those signs so that you get a little info on the legacy of it mm -hmm. all. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to get the glare off of it. There we go. Look at Michael J. Fox and how young he was. <laughs> so I'd love to see behind the hoverboard, they have a model. And I'm guessing it's the Future Institute, Institute of Future Technology model that they used to have on display years ago. But, you know, things I we can't see. a little see. taller. Yeah, and move around <laughs> the hoverboard. Um, I wonder if the proton packs are actually from the show. Used in, oh, used in HHN Tribute Store. So I like that it, oh. they call it out that it wasn't original. How big is the store? Um, it's it's pretty much the same size as the what it used to be. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean it it goes back. We'll we'll definitely venture back. But I. Yeah, it just looks pretty big. Stuff from Poseidon, uh, the door construction. Oh. Fun. There's Spider Man helping out with the construction. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the good old oh, Hulk. Wow. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's... Terminator head. I'm not even sure what that is, because it's not a T-100 head. So, we're in the back, and, you know, it's set up really well. And then, of course, this is the piece that... Um, Tony is going to come and try to steal at some point the Jimmy Neutron costume. <laughs> but we here at Universal do not endorse any of that. Is the merchandise below all this just the generic merchandise that we've seen yeah. so far? It's just Jurassic. Yeah, so Jurassic Park stuff. Cool. Yeah. Dueling Dragons, the old uh, Enchanted Oak that used to be... Sorry. That used to be where Diagon Alley is. 
and then they have some of the costumes from Dueling Dragons. Looks like mummy and horror makeup stuff. Oh, disaster shirt. <laughs> oh, some of the, I'm guessing these would be some of the chairs from the old um, disaster queue or earthquake. Yeah. Well, or, I guess um, you gotta put them somewhere. Yeah. Simpsons, the ride information. <laughs> Beetlejuice um, prosthetic head. <laughs> yeah, they've got some really fun stuff in here to look at. Again, it's to look at because the merchandise is just all the same merchandise that you can get many, many different places. Yeah. Uh, some bombs. That... No information. Oh, there we go. Um, so th the information's been redacted for our oh, gosh. safety. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's um, that's a map painting up there. I want to say that's... I remember seeing this. Hang on. Let's see if you can read what that says. Can you read what the plaque says? Uh, it says, no, I can't. Okay. That's a weird <laughs> thing to say in a plaque. It's a little glary for me. Um, a view of Manhattan used in a map shot... The Hindenburg, produced by Universal Studios, George T. Scott, 1975. We're going old legacy. Yeah, I remember that. I want to say that was in the disaster queue. Yeah, and they have just a little, like, uh, we're going to do another circle because there's stuff on the inside to look at. Um, replica Quinn. Go, go, gun, go, go, gun, yes. <laughs> Used in the queue for Jaws. Ah. That is not a monorail. I was going to say that looked like a monorail. <laughs> and then the uh, confrontation ride vehicle. Very cool. This is one of the things that I was looking forward to seeing the most in person. Oh, wow. That is a really cool model. Yeah, and you can tell that this is a definitely concept because if you look right here, that's the flying car that's stuck on the side of uh, Hogwarts when it ended up in the queue originally for um, Flight of the Hippogriff. Yeah. And now, of course, it's on Hagrid's. Yep, old Harry Potter props or Harry Potter props that are no longer being used. <laughs> the vehicle, the motorcycle. Hagrid's motor motorbike fabrication grand opening celebration. Huh, cool. Yeah, so it's, you know, things that have been used. And look, of course, Harry Potter section. You gotta have one. <laughs> The Goblet of Fire. That's all right, Tammy. You don't have to. Yeah. Read the books. <laughs> um, okay, so we've done the full circle. Oh, wait, there's some more stuff over here. Um, yeah, original photos Aww. of different things. When it was Earthquake and Jaws, there's the creature from the Black Lagoon. The fly pod and, you know, some of the early stuff that they had. Yeah. Mr. Spielberg down there. Yes. So we're still saving my, the, 
the grand finale is still to come. I'm but very excited about the grand finale. Now we're going to walk to the inside, and this is one of the fly pods from the fly starring Jeff Goldblum that was used in the horror makeup show. And it sat outside the exit of the horror makeup show for many years. So this is one of the grenade launchers from Jaws the Ride. Oh, yes, I remember that. Okay. And now we'll head, we'll do the inside tour. I really hope. Okay, hang on. The this is this is pretty dang cool. Oh, yeah, chocolate. It's the Universal Studios Florida logo with ET. I hadn't seen that, even if that has been out for a while. But that is cool. New to me. So now we're looking at the inside, and we start looking at the timelines. I'm not going to read everything. Um, I believe we have these pictures. Yes, we know. I know we have these pictures up because I avoided looking at them. Um, but I yeah, just like the new store, we have pictures of a lot of this stuff as well up on the website. So if you guys want to check it out, you could just search for a legacy store, and it'll be there as well. I enjoy the 1983 Jaws reopened. Um, <laughs> it kind of barely opened. Um, 95 to 2000, I was here. 97? Oh, no, I was here. I must have been here early 95 or late 95, early 96, because I was able to see Ghostbusters Spooktacular. Ah, so jealous. And, yeah, because I was here... I saw Ghostbusters, and I saw one of the first shows of T2 3D. And I also got a chance to, um, because I was a, a team member at Universal Hollywood, I was actually walked around the property by what was then the ops manager for attractions. And he walked me behind the scenes at Jaws so we could look out over at Islands of Adventure under construction and he pointed out where things were. So I will say that's pretty cool that it has those timelines there. I feel like that's up really high. Yeah. And the text looks pretty small. So not sure if that was. Yeah. I mean, the I can read pretty clearly. Oh, one Animal Planet Live opens, replace Animal's actor stage. Um, but yeah, it is it is definitely not for the smaller folk. Yeah. But then again, you know, how many of them probably actually like, um, I just want to buy my wand. And... <laughs> well, how are they supposed to turn into a theme park history enthusiast if it's all up there? E.T. ride vehicle model. That's cool. I love these ride vehicle models. Yeah. Um, this display changes. Oh, it has yeah. some of the studio guides. Aw. So they, I think they did a great job with this. Um, yeah, you know, the Universal Studios since 1912. Well, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I'd like to see more specific merchandise made just for the Legacy Store, and maybe that's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've done the circle. Now comes the challenge of... Um, getting out my wallet while I'm still holding on to the gimbal. Oh, here's <laughs> something unique. Uh, they have personalization for robes. Oh. And they were doing some of the, uh, the um, books. They'll emboss your name on there. There's jacket from Jaws. That's cool. Some of the other costumes. T2. Uh, the hey, original uh, neon stuff. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have some great stuff in here. It, there is not, as you were saying, that much unique. But, uh, you know, everything that's here is stuff that we as the nerds would go after. So, <laughs> Speaking yeah. of nerds. Dunna, dunna. Okay, so. And also, 
the the background music in the shop is some of the old spiels and um you know i'm hearing other things that are old universal very cool okay so moldorama moldomatic whichever you want to call it universal has uh, reinvested in these machines in the past i want to say past two years i want to say they started appearing before last halloween but this one is new and while it may just be a generic shark it does say universal studios at the bottom so here we are we're going to do a live Moldomatic. Super excited. I'm so glad that they started to bring these back. I remember these way back when, and they are always so much fun. They've had them at the tribute stores for the past year or two. Yeah. And um, cool to see it at this tribute store now. Now if we can just get the machine to work. Okay, here we go. The pure excitement. <laughs> Watch closely, friends. <laughs> Not only does it still have the exact same sounds, it still has the exact same smell. Ah. I can remember getting these at the Los Angeles Zoo was the first time I remember that. And I want to say SeaWorld had them in California. Um, I know the only ones that I've seen out here in many years was the at um, Bush Gardens. They've had their original ones for quite a while. I remember these at the zoo too. That's where I would always get mine. And uh, Zach, this store is over at City Walk. It says Universal Orlando. And it'll be on the left-hand side when you come in. And you always follow the instructions of holding it upside down so the, the, you know, the top part cools and everything fits in perfectly. <laughs> so there we go. There is the uh, look at Universal. Uh, it actually lasted longer than I expected, but... We'll have some pictures up of the Moldomatic. Yeah, we got a Jaws mold Moldorama. But very nice. I liked all the theming they put into the Legacy Store. Hoping for some cooler merchandise. Maybe we'll see that. But um, it's also nice that they have that new store up. Yeah, the new store is very nice. But again, it's, hey, all the same stuff. Um, yeah, but <laughs> exactly. You know, we keep saying that, but it's great that they have as much merchandise as they do. You know, we, we go to Disney all the time and we see the same merchandise in 20 stores where here you just see it in a handful of stores. Yeah, and especially right now with the parks always getting to capacity and stuff, it is nice to be able to get the merchandise without having to go in. Okay, what else we got going on today, Lee? Oh, we have, um, I think we got Marvel time coming up. And let me see what time that's going to be at. Do, 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 do. Yep. Yeah, we got Marvel time coming up, and it's going to be at uh, 1 p.m. Pacific. So that'll be 4 p.m. Eastern time. For everyone else, they'll be with Mac and Benji. They'll be going over all the different Marvel comics coming out. Yep, and today is uh, Wednesday, so make sure you, uh, after you do Marvel time, go to your local comic shop and buy comics. You know, support those real print things. It doesn't always just have to be digitally, but that's just me because I'm going to go to my comic shop in a little while and buy my comics. Okay. So with that and with Jaws, you can see it says Universal there. Um, you know, one of the nice things about, about the Moldomatic is they have been able to just change out the wording. So just throwing in a shark is unique because it says Universal. 
There's one of the team members saying, hey, keep your mask on, keep socially distant, do all the fun stuff. And we got the Cinemark, which I'm not going to go see a movie today, but they do have a very large theater showing Godzilla versus King Kong. It is open. And before we go, Amy wants to know what the best place is to eat over there. Um, if you're outside, I, I love Bubba Gumps. Like, Bubba Gumps to me, even though, yeah, it became the chain and everything, still has some of the best food overall. Um, if you're inside the park, I always go Louie's for some good old uh, chicken parm. If I'm in Islands of Adventure, I always uh, head over towards the three broomsticks in Harry Potter. Again, got to go with all the fun theming. Oh, yeah. So let's look down at the mini golf course as we ride off into the sunset. <laughs> Fun mini golf course. And to all, a good night. Uh, join us later for Marvel time. I will be walking uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios, I believe, at 1 o'clock on Friday, my time. 10 o'clock, your time, if you're on the East West Coast. So... Anything else, tweet us, follow us on Instagram, go over to our website. Please leave any comments that you want or anything you want us to do sometime in the future, and we'll be happy to try to do it. Yeah, thanks for joining us today, guys. Have a good one.